And now CBS2 brings you the top stories covering the corridor. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tiffany O'Donnell. Scott Sanborn is off tonight. We begin with a breaking news update and a violent chain of events that began in Johnson County. It all started just before 3 o'clock this morning when a Makokota police officer investigated a pickup on the side of the road. Just moments later, shots rang out. The police officer was hit and is recovering tonight. The driver who allegedly fired that first shot found dead later. Tracking developments all day long, CBS2 News reporter Kevin Barry, he's live in Makokota with the latest. Kevin. Tiffany, people here in Makokota say they heard gunshots clear across town. Some of them did. And they say that was when Aaron Scott of Wyoming, Iowa, and a Makokota police officer exchanged gunfire on this street right behind me early this morning. And the street may be open back now, but those residents say that this is not a day they'll soon forget because Makokota is just not one of the places where this kind of thing happens. It just, you, you never think it happened in a town this size. You start wondering who, um, and then, you know, if it's somebody from out of town, you know, you just don't really hear of a lot of things like that around here. Out of town, yes, but not far away. Police say the shooter was Aaron Scott, a 30-year-old from nearby Wyoming, Iowa. Matthew Heinrich lives in a home just down the street from the shooting, and he says he worked on a farm that Scott's family owns. The last time that I seen Aaron, he was... He was still a good kid. I mean, yeah, he went around, he drank a little bit, but he wasn't, I never would have caught him to be the guy that would do anything. Jackson County says Scott had at least two OWIs and that he had been in their jail two or three times for nonviolent offenses. I'd have never taken him as somebody that would have taken a pop shot at a cop. <laughs> Police say a Makokota officer approached Scott's pickup truck just a little before 3 a.m. Police are still investigating exactly what happened next, but they do know Scott and the officer exchanged gunfire, with the officer being hit in the arm with a round from a rifle. Then Scott fled the scene and lost police in Clinton County. A short time later, the vehicle was located on 150th Avenue, just north of Highway 136 in Clinton County. The vehicle had been involved in a rollover accident, and the driver was deceased in the vehicle. Police say they're still determining Scott's cause of death, while a small town breathes a sigh of relief. Everybody knows everybody, kind of like cheers. <laughs> it has some thinking about just how much more tragic this all could have been. I have, you know, small children. If this had happened during the day, um, if a bullet had ricocheted, and my kids play out in the backyard, I have my dog back there. That home you're looking at right now is the place where Matthew and Michelle both live. And as we come back down to the road, you can see just how close they are to the scene of that shooting just a little bit behind me. And after we spoke with Matthew, we did find out a little bit more information about the shooter, Aaron Scott from Wyoming. He was involved in a 2007 shooting that's confirmed by the Jones County Sheriff. They said that shooting was a thwarted suicide attempt. Scott was in his truck and at threatened to kill himself with a loaded gun when one of his friends tried to stop him. A struggle ensued, and during that struggle, the firearm went off and struck a third friend who lives right here in Makokota. That friend has been paralyzed, according to some reports, since that incident in 2007. There were no charges filed in that incident. The Jones County Sheriff says that's because they weren't able to prove intent that uh, Scott had intended to shoot his friend during that struggle. In Makokota, Kevin Barry, CBS2 News. Interesting twist there. Kevin, thanks so much. And if you missed this morning's news conference with investigators, we've put the entire event on our website. Just go to the raw news section of CBS2Iowa.com.